we start chapter 9 here of this uh, textbook and we introduce uh, the concept of a sequence. Later on in the next few sections we will talk about not a sequence but a series. A series is said to be a sequence with the terms just added together. But first we talk about a sequence, give its definition, and look at some neat applications. A sequence is said to be a function such that the domain is defined as the set of natural numbers. We denote a sequence in the manner of uh, a sub n or uh, lowercase b sub n or lowercase c sub n in that fashion. We distinguish uh, the standard function notation from a sequence by the uh, notation of uh, a sub n. A sequence is said to be a set, so we have the terminology with the brackets of a set notation, set of terms. Uh, 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 this set is said to be uh, representing each term, comma, the next term. Now the definition. The definition uh, of the limit of a sequence. Here, let L be some real number. Then the limit of the sequence uh, is said to be L. And that this limit is true, we can write it as the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity is equal to L. If for each epsilon greater than 0, there exists a capital M positive, such that the distance uh, of the measurement between each sequence value and the limit is less than some epsilon. Whenever uh, n, as you travel, as n goes to infinity, as n is selected, selected to be larger than the, uh, the fixed number capital M. If the limit of the sequence exists, then we say that the sequence converges. Otherwise, the, uh, the limit, um, if it does not exist, we say that the sequence diverges. The limit of a sequence, uh, the theorem, if let L be a real number and, and then F is a function, a standard function, and so we look at the limit of the function uh, as x goes to infinity is equal to some number L, then this is tantamount to saying that F of n represents the sequence, whereby n are said to be uh, the natural numbers or the positive integers. Then the, the set of values of n being positive integers um, mapped into the function, giving us uh, some result that we call sequence values. The limit of the sequence is said to also uh, uh, have the limit L. So the, the sequence and the function represent the same thing. There are standard uh, algebraic or uh, arithmetic properties for uh, the sequence, the same thing for functions, and the same uh, properties for numbers. Uh, let the sequence here have a limit. Uh, uh, the limit of a sub n is equal to L. The limit of b sub n is equal to k. So here we say that the limit of the sequence uh, of the sum, right, the limit of the sum of the sequences is equal to the sum of the limits, whether it's the sum or the difference. The limit of a sequence where it's the sequence times a constant is equal to the constant times the limit. The limit of the product of the sequences is equal to the product of the limits. The limit of the, uh, the quotient uh, of the sequences is equal to the quotient of the limits. And then we come to a very classic uh, theorem, the squeeze theorem. We talked about the, threes, the squeeze theorem for functions. Now let's talk about the squeeze theorem for sequences. Basically, they say the same thing, that if the limit of a sub n is equal to L, and that's the same as the limit of b sub n as n goes to infinity, and there exists an integer capital N such that uh, the sequence values are bounded a sub n less than or equal to c sub n less than or equal to b sub n for all n, little n, greater than capital N, then the limit of 
the sequence C sub n as n goes to infinity is also equal to L. In other words, if, if it's possible to sandwich the sequence C sub n between A sub n and B sub n, where C sub n is bounded below by A sub n, is bounded above by B sub n. And secondly, if you know the limits of A sub n and B sub n, that they're equal to L. So then if you've sandwiched C sub n in the middle, if the limits of A sub n and B sub n go to L, then likewise the limit of C sub n, since it's sandwiched in the middle, the limit of C sub n must also uh, go to L. Let's use that uh, to work this problem here. So we notice that sine n is bounded below and above by plus or minus 1. So we have negative 1 less than or equal to sine n. That's less than or equal to 1 here for all n. That's a positive integer. Also, we know that if you look at the sequence one over n and the sequence negative one over n that these uh, two sequences uh, converge to zero. They both go to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay. Well, since n is positive, since n positive, with negative 1 over n less than or equal to sine n over n less than or equal to 1 over n. So since n positive with negative 1 over n less than or equal to sine n over n less than or equal to 1 over n, here's what I've done. I've taken negative 1 less than or equal to sine n less than or equal to 1, divide everything through by n, n being positive, right? n being positive, then I have uh, this sequence of sine n over n being bounded below and bounded above. And I know something about the limits of negative 1 over n and, and 1 over n. They both go to 0. So since n positive with this relationship, then this Let me state it then the limit as n goes to infinity of sine n over n goes to zero because the limit as n goes to infinity negative 1 over n, let's parentheses, is equal to 0, and that's the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n. So, very good. Well, let's look at uh, some other consequences of the, uh, the sequence. The so-called absolute uh, value theorem that says that if you're given a sequence a sub n, if the limit of the absolute value of a sub n is equal to 0 as n goes to infinity, then the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity has to also go to 0. Well, let's look at this problem here. You can break this sequence into two parts. You can look at this as being 1 over n squared. Plus 
negative 1 to the n all over n squared. Now, the first part, we have no problem. That limit, so here, the limit of 1 over n squared, as n goes to infinity, this goes to 0. And let's take the other part here, we look at, based on the absolute value theorem, the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of negative 1 to the n all over n squared. This is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared, which also goes to infinity. Right. So if, if that be the case, then here we took the absolute value of this uh, sequence, and we got that limit to equal to 0. So then the limit of the original sequence must also go to 0. So then we say then the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 um, to the nth over n squared must also go to, to 0 as n goes to infinity. And since both of the parts, the limits go to 0, then this sequence converges and its limit is 0. What about the idea of monotonic sequences and bounded sequences? We're trying to build a theorem in mathematics that we call the hanna borel theorem. And the hanna borel theorem says that if you know that a sequence is bounded and that is also monotonic, that uh, the sequence converges. So we build the definitions for monotonic sequences and also bounded sequences. A sequence here is said to be monotonic, that is, is either increasing or decreasing. They use the sophisticated terms of non-decreasing or non-increasing. Here, a sequence is non-decreasing um, if the terms are getting larger. And so a sub 1 is less than or equal to a sub 2, less than or equal to a sub 3, and less than and so on, less than or equal to a sub n, and so on. Or the sequence is said to be non-increasing or decreasing, if you will, and I hope that's okay. Uh, some of the people in the mathematical world would get upset uh, with uh, just saying the term increasing or decreasing, but I think it's okay. Uh, here, um, the sequence is decreasing if the, the previous term is, is bigger than the, the next term. a sub 1 is uh, greater than or equal to a sub 2. That's greater than or equal to a sub 3, and so on. So either the, the sequence values are going up always or that they're going down. No hanky-panky, right? No in-between. No going up and down. Well, the word hanky-panky may not be a good phrase here for this mathematical um, statement. But I think you get the picture. Now, secondly, we talk about a sequence that's bounded. Does it have an upper bound? Does it have a lower bound? Well, if it has an upper bound, we say that a sequence is bounded above when there is a real number, some capital M, such that for all the sequence values, the sequence values are always less than or equal to this fixed number, capital M, for all n. The number m is called the upper bound of the sequence. Or you could have the other way. The sequence could be bounded below. Uh, when there is some number we call capital N, doesn't matter about m or n, just to distinguish between the upper bound, the lower bound. Uh, in analysis, we call the upper bound the inframum, or well, the uh, supramum, and the lower bound the inframum. <laughs> anyway, the lower bound uh, said to be some real number, capital uh, N, such that N is always less than or equal to A sub N, the sequence values for all N. The sequence is said to be bounded if it's bounded above or um, if it's uh, bounded uh, below. Uh, just one is sufficient, so it doesn't have to, to have both um, for
for the sequence to be bounded. So this is the so-called Hanna-Barrell theorem given to you uh, according to your textbook. They just say here bounded monotonic sequences. We know it as the Hanna-Barrell theorem. Here, if a sequence uh, is bounded and monotonic, then it must converge. Well, just an example of a sequence that here is bounded above by some fixed number L, whereby the sequence values never topple this number or that horizontal line L. And uh, the sequence uh, is bounded and notice that is increasing right well here they say non decreasing and so if that be the case this sequence converges uh, the terms for the sequence if they increase without bound then we say that the, the limit uh, is infinity if the terms decrease without bound then the limit is negative infinity if it doesn't have a bound that is, if the limit is infinity or negative infinity, the sequence does not converge. It would diverge. Well, let's look at some terms here in terms of uh, writing uh, some of these uh, uh, sequence values and trying to find the so-called pattern. Write the next two apparent terms of the sequence. Describe the pattern you use to find these terms. Well, I'm just going to give you the, the general formula. And that's what we always need. Sometimes you can do this, that if you notice that between the differences of the terms, it's the same number, then um, you, you can form the uh, formula for the sequence in a very easy way. Now, if these term differences are different, then we have to use another method, my method. But here, um, we use this method here. Notice that 5 minus 2 is 3, 8 minus 5 is 3, and 11 minus 8 is also 3. So the pattern here, there's a, a 3, a multiple of 3 uh, in each term. So we're going to say here that we have some 3 times n. Now, um, we don't know um, how to build the numbers because even though there's a difference of a 3, how do you form the 2, the 5, the 8, and the 11? Well, let's see if we can build the, the, uh, the first term. Let's see if I can erase this. Notice this is when n is equal to 1. This is when n is equal to 2. This is when n is equal to 3. This is when n is equal to 4, and so on. That number n is important. So to build the sequence, let's say that a sub n is equal to some 3 times n. We know that the pattern, there's a multiple of that, plus we don't know what this number is going to be to be able to produce the 2, the 5, the 8, and the 11. Let's just say a, some number a, and if we start with the first term, this is equal to 2 to see if we can find a. Well, we can say that this is equal to 2 when n is equal to 1. When n is equal to 1. So if that be the case, then we have 3 times 1 plus a is equal to 2. We get 3 plus a is equal to 2. a is equal to negative 1. So we conclude here that the sequence is 3n minus 1. So if you want the next term, so the next term would be when n is equal to 5. So a sub 5 is equal to 3 times 5 minus 1. So that gives us 15 minus 1. We get 14. And you knew that with the difference of the 3's, but we like to go by the, the formula and the pattern that's formed there. a sub 6 is 3 times 6 minus 1. So we get 17. Let's look at this one. Let's see if we can find the difference between 13 and the uh, 8. So that's 5. The difference here is 5. The difference there is 5. The difference here is 5. So we use the same method from before. So here we have a sub n is equal to 5n plus uh, some number that we have to determine is equal to 
see that first term, 8, when n is equal to 1. So it gives us 5 plus a is equal to 8. a is equal to 3. So if that be the case, then a sub n is equal to 5n plus 3. Let's see if that's true. If n is 1, then we have 5 plus 3, we get 8. If n is 2, we get 10 plus 3, we get 13. So this is when n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the next one would be a sub 6. So that's 5 times 6 plus 3. So it gives us 33. And then a sub 7 is 5 times 7 plus 3. So we get 38. Let's look at uh, this uh, pattern. And notice here this is 5, 10, 20, and 40. Well, the difference here is a 5. The difference there is 10. The difference there is 20. So we can't use the previous method. So notice that this is n is equal to 1, n is 2, n is 3, n is 4. So we use uh, just one of my methods. So then we have the, the, the sequence. We just call it a sub n. So this number here is 5, and then we get 10, 20, and then 40. Now, notice that the 5, we want to write that out in some expression of, uh, of these terms here. And notice the 10, we're going to write the 10 based on the previous number. So this is 5 plus 5. I'm going to write that 20 based on the 5 as well. So this is 5 plus 5. 5 plus 5 plus 5 and and this 40 is just 5 times 8 and look at this this is 5 times 1 2 3 4 this is 5 times 2 this guy right here is 5 times 1 so everything is multiplied by a 5 multiplied by 5 and notice here that the patterns go from 1 to 2 to 4 to 8. It looks like it's a base of a 2 raised to some power. What is that power is the question. Well, this is 2 to the first, it looks like. This is 2 to the 0. This is 2 to the second. This is 2 to the third. But it has to be based on the, the input. The operator, he puts in an input of n, right? So this, if he's putting in n here to be 1, but this is... 2 to the 0, hmm. look at this, he's putting in an input of 2, this is 2 to the 1st, so that 1 is, is different by a 1 here, 2 minus 1, look at this pattern, I'm putting in n equal to 3, but here I have a 4 or 2 to the 2nd, right, and so if that be the case, and look at this guy here, this is 2 to the 3rd, Right? So let me see if I can write this out so you can see what I see. This is 5 times 2 to the third. This is 5 times 2 to the second. This is 5 times 2 to the first. Right? This is 5 times 2 to the zero. Right? But this number here, that exponent, has to be based on what the input is is coming in to be right what is being inputted right what, what is different by one so no problem so it looks like to me that the pattern for a sub n is five times two to the n minus one look this is a four it's a three four minus one is three right this is a three but it's a two up there right so that's that's what three minus one i get two let, let's see if it works 
So let's say if you want to find a sub 1, this is 5 times 2 to the 1 minus 1, you get 5. But if you want to find a sub 2, this is 5 times 2 to the here, 2 minus 1, you get 10. So, so we get that, that's 10, right? And then you get the third one, the fourth one, then you can find the fifth one and the sixth one, right? So this is the fourth. The fifth one um, is a sub 5. So this is 5 times 2 to the 5 minus uh, 1, so that's 4. So we get here 5 times 16. Gives us, is it an 80? And then you can build the next one. A sub 6 is 5 times 2 to the 6 minus 1, that's 5. So we get 5 times 2 to the 5 is 32, right? And so we can get that. All right, let's find some more patterns in exercise 45 to 52. Write an expression for the nth term of the sequence. There is more than one correct answer. Well, you never get to see that statement in math, right? It's either in math is right or they put an X on it is wrong. But we like to see there's more than one correct answer. But anyway, so again, I think you can f uh, figure out something. The difference between 8 and 2 is 6. The difference between 14 and 8 is the 6. The difference between the 20 and the 14 is the 6. So the, the same previous method that we gave you, uh, it looks like you can use that. So it looks like we have some a sub n is equal to 6n plus I don't know, right? And that's equal to, let's say for the first term, and this is when n is equal to 1. n is 1, n is 2, n is 3, n is 4, right? So if that be the case, if you let n equal to 1, we get 6 plus a is equal to 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And so <coughs> we get here, uh, 6 minus 2 is uh, negative 4. So a is equal to negative 4. So the pattern of the sequence, a sub n is equal to 6n minus 4. What about this one? Let's see, this is 1, and then we get 1 over 2, we get 1 over 6, 1 over 24, 1 over 120. Now we you, you want to talk about the factorials. call it n factorial, which is defined as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times and so on times 3, times 2, times 1. And also we define we define 0 factorial is 1 and 1 factorial is equal to 1. And it's okay. It's okay. It works out. So, if you think about it, 2 factorial is 2 times 1, that's 2. Here, 3 factorial is 3 times 
3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, so that's 6. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, you get 24. 5 factorial is 5 times 24, so 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 it gives us 120. I think with that in mind, you see the pattern here. The sequence looks like it's 1 over n factorial. So if n is 1, we get 1 divided by 1, we get 1. If n is 2, you get 1 over 2 factorial, which is 1 half. If n is 3, then you get 1 over 3 factorial, which is 1 over 6, and so on. Let's look at this one. Look at the difference between these two, these numbers, right? So it's the difference of a 3, it's the difference of a 5, here's the difference of it's a 4 and a 3 is 7, the difference of a 9. And so we're saying, what in the world, right? But these numbers are not the same, so we have a little trouble. We're going to see if we can figure out this pattern. Just just using a, just an, an, an old, you know, uh, method. Uh, where did we get it from? We just thought it up, right? Just look at the problem and how, how will you figure out a problem that you're given in life? You know, you start with very minimum uh, consequences and you build on that. Right? Uh, the theory of computer science no matter how complex uh, the program that, that you want to write may be, everything in computer programming is built on zeros and ones. That's our idea. So we start off with one, two, three, four, five. The first term here is negative two. The next one is one. We get six, 13, 22. Right. So, now, I don't know what to do with the negative 2 and, and the 1. I don't. But the 6, can kind of look at how I can get uh, 6 from the 3. So I'm going to start here and say this is 3 plus 3. Then the 4, I'm going to say 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12, then plus a 1. Right. The 5 and the 22, I'm going to write everything in terms of, because the, in, the user's in, he, he is inputting the end, right? Most important. I want to write about that. That can be a speech, uh, a sermon. Um, the choice. In computer programming, everything for that program is based on, first of all, the, the one who is operating the computer has to, to, to give an input because the computer prompts the user to supply something. And that's how life is. You're given choices. Which one will you choose? There is a mathematical theorem that's called the axiom of choice. <sighs> that that the function that the the graph that you're considering uh, is based on whatever shape, uh, whatever location on the interval is based on first and foremost the user's input. Okay, we're going to save that for another time. So this is five plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 2. Okay. All right, so now, now this count, now this is n plus n, right? This is n plus n plus n plus 1. This is n plus n plus n plus n. Now, see if we can build this. Uh, so notice, let's count these threes. There's two of them, right? Count, this is three of them. Count these one, two, three, four. It's four of these guys. It's it's three threes, right? Here, but this is a three. Here this is four of these is three of these fours, but this is a four. Notice the difference of a one. Right? Five, this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? So so it looks like this is it's gonna be an N, a number N, that's what you're given, right? This four, if you look at this, and this is times n minus 1. So in other words, this is 3 times 4, 
right? So this is 4, and then n minus 1 is, is 4 minus 1 is 3 times 4, right? Now plus, uh-oh, oh, how do we get that? That's interesting. So we have to do some work on that. So how do we get that it's plus some other number, right? No problem. We'll, well, look, everything is based on, it's going to be based on n again. So the, the difference between this 1 and the 4 is a 3. Look at this this 2 and that 5. They're different by 3. And that's probably why we don't have anything up here because it's starting with the difference of a 3. So if I give you n and you give me back 1, if n is 4, that means that I'm saying n minus 3. So let's see. So let's see if we can build the 22. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So, but n is 5. So I put a 5 here. 5 minus 1 is 4. So I get 5 times 4. I get that. Now, plus, how do I get the 2? Well, if n is 5 and 5 minus 3, I get 2. Now, let's simplify that. n squared minus n plus n minus 3. Well, the minus n, the plus the n, you didn't even need. But we didn't know that. Well, I didn't know that because I take everything just from zeros and ones. So this is n squared minus 3. Now let's see if it works. a sub n, I'm claiming it to be n squared minus 3. So why is that doing that? I don't know. This crazy computer. It wouldn't have happened on the chalkboard, right? We don't get that problem from the chalkboard. Okay. Now, let's try it out. <laughs> Make sure we can pick up that uh, a sub 1 being negative 2. So let's see. a sub 1 is 1 minus 3, negative 2. Good. a sub 2 is 2 squared minus 3, I get 4 minus 3, I get 1. Right. Let's try the next one. a sub 3, 3 squared minus 3, get 9 minus 3, gives me 6. What about the next one? a sub 4, get 4 squared minus 3, 16 minus 3, All right? get 13. We got it. This guy works. Well, this is no problem. This looks like 1 over, well, okay. This is 1, this is 2, right? And 2 squared, I get 4. 3 squared, I get 9. So this looks like 1, a negative 1, over here, n squared. But the negative is popping on the on the even. So a couple ways you can do that. But we say the negative one to the n plus one. So let's see if that's true. If n is one, then I get negative one to the second power, that's positive. And then 1 squared is 1, so I get 1. If n is 2, I get negative 1 to the 2 plus 1. That's uh, negative 1 to the negative, th negative 1 to the 3. That's negative 1. And then I get 2 squared. I get 4. And okay, that works. All right. Remember that n is starting at 1, 2, 3, and 4. So here the pattern for a sub n, if if n starting at one, so this is uh, uh, n for the numerator plus one. Right, let's see if that's true. If n is two, you get two plus one, you get three, and then this is one more than that. So this is n plus two. So if n is 1, I get 2 over 3. If n is 4, 
I get 5 over 6. That works. All right. I think it kind of spooked me out when I saw those big numbers there. But I didn't panic. I thought about small numbers. They, they try to throw you off, you know. So this is n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, n equal to 4, n equal to 5. And I thought about the factorials. Either you, you I'm thinking factorials or you know, some kind of exponent, you know, something squared or whatever, or, or, or some term to the nth power. But the pattern here, to me, suggested factorial. Let's see. This is 2 times 1. This is 24, which has a 2 in it, right? And then the 720, that's a factorial. So notice that this is directly... Two n factorial. Now I saw that. Let's let's check it out. A sub one is two times one. That's two factorial. I get two. A sub two is two times two. This is four factorial. That's four times three times two times one. That's twenty-four a sub 3. It's going to be 2 times 3, 6 factorial. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is 5 factorial times 6, right? Well, 5 factorial um, is 120 times 6. That gives you 720. A sub 4 is 8 factorial. That's that big number there. And the last one here, and then we'll take a break. Was there the same difference here? This goes back to the previous examples earlier. 8 minus 1 is 7. 15 minus 8 is 7. 22 minus 15 is 7. So again, um, let's say that a sub n is the pattern 7n plus something we don't know. I want to build the first uh, term 1. This is when n is equal to 1, right? So that be the case that we get 7 times 1 plus a is equal to 1. Subtract 7 on both sides. a is equal to negative 6. So a sub n is 7n minus 6. Thank you.